So what you need to do, first you have to understand the principle of gel electrophoresis, how the electrophoresis works, and you also need to know what's a lab procedure. So for this one, I'm going to show you a quick video. But you will be more effective if you do it in the lab. Okay. After you have put your PCR product in the gel and run the electrophoresis, then you have to know how to check the result. Okay. So electrophoresis is the method <coughs> for separation and analysis of DNA or other macromolecules based on their size and charge. This is why you have to understand the physical properties of DNA. Okay? So this method is not only for the DNA, but in this course, we only use it for DNA. Okay? So what, what you show here actually is a development okay, of the DNA te technologies milestone. So gel electrophoresis is the first one. It's very important. Okay? Before that, it's very hard for you to study DNA because you cannot see it. Okay? One way to visualize it by using the gel electrophoresis. In the past, until 1980s, you still cannot see the ATCG. Okay? It's not easy. But at least you can see the size of the DNA. You can use the restriction enzyme to cut the DNA. Okay? Then you can see the genetic variation. We're going to discuss a bit more in the next lecture, DNA sequencing. So the electrophoresis started in 1930s and is used in the DNA in the 1950s. Okay? So you have to know the physical and the chemistry properties of DNA, what's the size and everything. So there are a few things you have to know when you talk about the gel electrophoresis. So this is the principle. First is the strength of the electric field. So it's a voltage because it's electrophoresis, right? And the DNA molecule is negatively charged, so they will move to the anode. And you also need to know the size of the molecule. Okay? So this is a basic setup. So you have a system, okay. power supply, you have the positive and negative, you can adjust the voltage, okay, you can set the voltage here. You have the so this is the first thing. You, in the system, you need an electric power supply. You also need a support matrix. In this case, it's an acarose or polyacrylamate gel. Okay. In this course, you're going to use the acarose. Okay. So this is different type of the gel. Okay. You're going to form the gel for the matrix. Supporting matrix. So that means that your DNA will be moved in this supporting matrix. Okay. In this case, it's a gel. <coughs> And usually we use only 1% gel, so that means that if you you put 1 gram of the algae, okay, in a, it's not a normal algae, it's a very high quality algae, in 100 ml solution, you cook it, okay, then you get a 1% gel. Okay. So if you do 1% gel, the pore size in the gel okay, is about this size, okay, 100 nanometer to 200 nanometer. So the next thing you need to have is the buffer. Just imagine you have the tray, right? Then you connect the tray with the positive and negative charge of your power supply. You put the gel here, it's still nothing will happen. Okay? You need to put a ionic buffer okay, to have the conductivity. Okay? Because um, the ne negative need to be go to the positive, right? So you need a medium. Okay? If you just put the gel and hang in there, Nothing will happen. This is why you need an ionic buffer. So there are few purposes. One is to against the pH charge. Another one is to connect the power supply and your matrix. So this is a system for the gel electrophoresis, okay. specifically for the DNA study. Okay. So you have to know the system. There are three things in the system. You have to know what is their function. So this is our process. First, you have to cut the gel. I can show you the video here. But if you go back, you can watch it again. So to make a gel, you need an algae, right? So algae is a powder. And you need a, some liquid. But we do not use only the H2O, because the H2O is, is, a, is a distilled water. There's no 
distilled, there's nothing in the distilled water, right? So there's no way the electric can move. Okay, so that's the, that's the reason why you use the ionic buffer. So it's a buffer with the, what we call the TPE buffer. So there are some ion inside, okay, there are some chemicals. So you just put the, put the buffer, okay, measure the buffer. After that, make sure you have enough alcohol powder. So this is how it looks like. So we show you make one percent gel, right? Eh? Okay. And how large of the gel? I mean, how much of the buffer you have to use depends on the size of the gel. Okay. So in this case, you use 0 0.5 gram alcohol plus 80 microlit, then um, 80 millimeter uh, milliliter of the PB buffer. So after that, you just mix them together. Okay, mix them together. The buffer, the buffer, and also the. Okay, you just mix them, just like how you make a okay. Then the next thing you have to do is just go in for one to two minutes. It really depends on the temperature of your buffer, how much of the buffer, and how much of the alcohol. You just have to make sure everything is properly dissolved. After it dissolved, then you can. Put it in the <clears throat> in the casing, okay? To make the shape of the matrix, and also make sure there's a hole for you to lock the gel. So you can see the blue color comb, right? Okay, so you just put that, and then put the buffer. After you remove the comb, then you have the hole for you to lock the PCR product, okay? Of course, you have to leave it for a little bit cooler too hot and then the plastic, like this is made of plastic. Okay. So you can see <coughs> the comb is partially submerged, right? Okay. So that means that when you remove the comb, then there's a hole okay, for you to lock your sample. Okay. So you just leave it for 15 minutes or half an hour until it's totally solidified. So after that, you just remove it, then you can see the hole, right? Okay. So the next thing you have to do transfer into the tray with the buffer. So see there's a buffer, right? Okay. Okay, make sure the, the gel is totally submerged un un under the buffer. Okay. Make sure the hole also fill with the buffer. If not enough, then just add more buffer. So the next thing is to load the gel. Because you can see the there's a color solution, right? So this is a loading dye, just a dye. For your PCR product, it's, there's no color, right? So if you just load like this, it's very hard for you to see whether you load it correctly or is there any spill over. So that's the reason we um, mix it with a little bit of dye before we put in the gel, okay? Another reason is you also can see when you turn on your power supply, you also can see where are your PCR product. They move until where, okay? If not, then you don't see anything. Okay. So you just watch the video. So after that, so I just load it. And then turn, on, turn it on. <clears throat> because we know the length of the gel, we haven't done this many times. So for 25 minutes, it's still within the gel. But the DNA starts to move. Okay. If you run it, for too long, then they will move out from the gel and disappear. Okay. So the last last step, even though you can see the dye, okay, but the dye it moves a little bit faster than your PCR product. So this is not exactly your PCR product. The dye is just a dye. Okay. So this is the reason why you need to stain your DNA inside the gel so you can see. It. So after that, you just remove it and transfer into the lithium bromide. Okay, just put them for two minutes, 20 minutes, and after that, you see, you cannot see anything, right? Okay. Then turn, put under the UV light. Okay. I mean, put the UV light under the gel, and turn on the UV light. There you can see the, so this is your PCR product. 
You see it? You see a band. And you also have a tie, so this is your tie. Okay? So for those with the band, then you, you know that there's a successful uh, uh, the PCR reaction and PCR process. Okay? So for staining, you can use different types of chemical and different light. Okay? In this case, we use the ethium bromide and we use the UV light. You have the result like this, right? You can see the. So you have the DNA later. Okay. You must have a DNA later. So this is your reference. So after you have done your PCI, you lock your sample. You also need to lock a DNA later. So DNA later is like a standard reference. So in this case, we already know in this standard, if the band is here, how many best pairs? So this is 100, 200, 300. So the length of your PCI product. Okay. But this is not your product, right? This is a reference. Then you can compare your product with the reference. If here is 500 and 600 for the reference, and yours is in between, right? So that means that your PCI product is around 550. Okay. And also you can see in the ladder, there are different intensity, right? Some of them are very bright, some of them are very faint. Okay. This is an indication of the concentration. So in the DNA ladder, there's a reference. They also tell you what's the concentration of your DNA. Then you can compare this to the standard. So that means that your concentration is same as this one. For this one, the concentration is same as this one. Okay? So you have the sample. You have a positive and negative control. So the, when you do your PCR, you have your sample, right? You also need to include one positive control. That means the DNA extract, which is working in the past, you know there's a positive, you do it. So this round, if the PCI is successful, then this positive must be positive. Then you also have a negative control, which for positive control, you put the DNA extract, which previously gives you the result. For negative control, you will not put any DNA extract. You just put the water. So that means that there should be no band. Okay? And also you need a reference, which is the DNA ladder. So you can use it as a reference for fragment size and also the PCR product concentration. So that's all for electrophoresis.